Today, we start the first step in the new direction of HTME, building civilization from scratch, starting at the very beginning. So let's reset ourselves back to the beginning of modern humanity itself, roughly 300,000 BCE. This is the believed date modern Homo sapiens first arrived, but while our species was just beginning, stone tools had already been used for 3 million years already by early hominids. With this first episode, I hope to set up the launching point for the rest of the series, so I'm aiming to get a few fundamental early innovations of humans that will be crucial to have very soon. First, some cutting and carving tools I can use to make some basic woodworking, and wooden tools, and ceramics. My plan is to not get too deep into the Stone Age era of technology, as there are several other channels that do a much better job exploring this era. And something that will become very apparent is that trying to make anything using stone tools can be a pretty slow process. So I don't want to get stuck in the Stone Age, like humanity did for 99% of its existence. Some of the first stone tools that were made were made using a technique called flint napping, when flint or chert rocks were broken to form razor sharp edges. I've actually covered flint napping a couple times previously for making some basic tools and weapons, but I never really learned how to actually use them to shape wood. So while in England this spring, I met with a flint napper at Butzer Ancient Farm. Butzer Ancient Farm explores experimental archeology span and gives a chance for visitors to interact with various time periods in England, ranging from the Stone Age to the Anglo-Saxons. And they do a variety of events, including reenactment of Viking attacks. Speaking of which, here's a sponsor of today's video. We want to thank Viking War of Clans for sponsoring this video. So while Andy is out building modern society from scratch, you can try your own hand at building a Viking empire from scratch with this awesome mobile multiplayer real-time strategy game. Boasting more than 20 million players, this game takes place in the grim northern lands, where Viking warlords fight over every piece of precious territory. Vikings War of Clans harkens back to the classic RPG games like Age of Empires that I started playing back in the day. If you love building worlds, then you'll love this game. You can be a clan leader and manage your people. You can be a killer and destroy your enemies. Or you can use your economic skills to build a giant city in your name. This game follows classical gameplay rules, but the great visual style packed with excellent 3D graphics and an immersive soundtrack give it a deep, strategic experience. The fact that it's on mobile means I can play for just a few minutes when I have some downtime or for hours. Help out our channel by downloading Vikings for free at the links below. Plus, as a special bonus, you'll get 200 free gold and a protective shield. Back at the farm, first I met with the project's coordinator, Trevor. So Butts Ranch and Farm is uh, an experimental archaeological site and we have existed since about 1971. What we do is try and find out physically how things worked in the past, how things were built in the past. Then are there specific time ranges you limit yourself to? From about six or six and a half thousand years ago right through to about 1,300 years ago. So what we do is take any archaeological evidence we can find and try and reconstruct it in some way, shape or form. Using materials and technology that was available and that's really important. A lot of the time archaeology is very theoretical. What we have around now is not necessarily what they had then. Is there evidence of settlement here in the past? In this spot? Yeah. No actually that's one of the reasons we're here. We can dig and scrape and probe and not do any damage to any other archaeology. Then I met with a flint napper, Mark. He wasn't killed for profit. He was killed out of revenge. <laughs> flint is very old. It's between 70 million and 100 million years old and it's formed at the bottom of the sea. It mixes up with sands and over time becomes very hard but because it's mixed up with that sand it's quite glass like so when you hit it if it's at the right angle with the right amount of force it, the flakes will come off. So that's basically what flint napping is, the controlled removal of flakes. So if we were to just hit this there we couldn't accurately predict how it's going to break, but if we turned it around and we struck it from this angle, we can be sure that this will come off as long as there's no faults in there. But yeah, feel free if you um, want to try and pick it up. <laughs> Hefty beast. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want to be doing it all day, would you? Yeah. Hit it around there, <laughs> and the snow starts breaking. Excellent. Good. Good. That's nice. We'll keep that to one side. Nice. Lovely. See, I can tell you've done this before. <laughs> See, all of these things, they can become arrows in, in the future, so it's always worth keeping anything aside that's good, even if it's not what you're planning on making. I would now look at um, turning this into a hand axe. At the moment, if we try to use this on wood, all that would happen would it, it would break. This is sharper than this. 
but you don't want it to be that sharp. This won't break if you're working woods, but this will. So basically what we want to do is start trying to round this off. So how many times have you done flint napping? Uh, two or three. Nice. Good. Good, so we've got an edge here that we would be able to start chopping through wood with. It's fairly easy to make, yeah. it's quick to make. In terms of the fancy um, hand axes that we show in museums in this country, that's just because it's at a point in the Neolithic where flint nappers are trying to demonstrate their skill to people. The same with barbed and tanged arrowheads. Someone in the Stone Age is sitting down and trying to say, look how good I am. They've got the cutting edge, now they just want to make it as comfortable on their hands as possible so they start to get the shape. Yeah, that's good. So if you um, like sort of run your finger along there carefully, yeah. before it was very sharp but very brittle. Because you've taken that sharp edge out and tapered it out, it means that it's now strong. You could hit it on woods and it wouldn't break. So what we're going to do is, with these two pieces, put a serrated edge on there, kind of like a saw. It's really slow going through wood with these, but it does work. The downside of these is that those teeth break really easy and they become blunt very quickly. So whenever you're um, planning on cutting through some woods, you need to have loads of these ready. <laughs> We're using the same kind of tools that they would have used. Mm -hmm. It's slow going, they would have done it quicker, but it's still, if you had a modern saw, you'd be straight through that. Ways into the Copper Age, flint tools were still being used, right? The Copper Age was over in Europe, but not in this country. We skipped the Copper Age and went straight to the Bronze Age, but they're still using flint. The arrowheads in the Bronze Age are made of flint, barbed and tanged arrowheads. Mm -hmm. Still got ways to go. <laughs> <laughs> How about this one? Yeah. Yeah? Start like chopping in like that. Tired yet? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Still not there yet. <laughs> Do you want to try one of the other ones? Sure. Let's try with that one. Is that working better? I think so. See, fancy doesn't mean better. <laughs> they just look better. Makes you appreciate all the work that went into surviving yeah. in the Stone Age. Because everything takes a long time. Did it. <laughs> Let's save there. So if you start banging that in, mm -hmm. see if you can split it down there. You put the hatchet blade through there mm -hmm. and then bind up the end. So when ancient people are going through like lots of um, brushlands, then they can cut through. All right, you ready to go into the woods? Sure. So we've got these two edges here. Mm -hmm. Borins used for carving wood. Bone will get you to carve your name in there. See how well they work. The Neanderthals especially, when theirs broke, they just used the pressure flaker and retouched them to put another edge on there and then carried on. They nearly all have evidence of um, retouching on there. So when you think of like the Lion Man statue, and that's made out of mammoth bone, it makes you realise how much work went into that one statue. It would, never would have been completed by one person. It would have taken more than a lifetime to complete it, so it would have been a generation thing. The ideal piece, you want it to have a thick back because that would be the end that you're going to hit. If it's too thin, then it will just crumble and wouldn't work properly. So basically what you want to do, have that there and then start hitting it. You want to start off quite gentle at first, um, just until it's made a bit of a groove. And then when it's in there, then you can start really hitting it and splitting it down there. What you can do to speed this process up um, with this, the saw that you made, you can start off that line that you need with one of those. It's the start of it that takes all the time, and then once once you hear um, the first bit split, then it's just a case of hitting it harder and it goes through. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, there is a reason that the Stone Age ended. <laughs> and the Bronze Age took over. So when it's far enough in that it will split the wood slightly, mm -hmm. that's when suddenly the progress speeds right up. So if that'll work. Now bang that one into there.
<laughs> I'm, I'm impressed you managed to split that all the yeah. way through. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> so the reality of it is that it's a really easy thing to do if you've got modern tools. Yeah. You could, we could give you um, a hatchet and you'd be through that within three seconds. Now, if you're out in the woods and you find a bit of flint and you need to have split wood like that, you'd be able to do it. Yeah. It's gonna take you time. Yeah. But in the Stone Age, you're not the only person. There's a tribe of you. So if you need lots of those, then just lots of you are gonna be making them. It's the same with the flint napping. If someone's good at one thing, but not so good at another, they're all, they're all mucking in to, to get the job done. So today you've, you've gone back in time and got in touch with your ancestors because they would have been doing things like you've done today. And I just think the only way we can really understand the people of the past is to do the things that they did because otherwise we can never appreciate the skill and the time and patience involved. What are you doing? <laughs> Back home, it's time to put this new set of flint tools to work. This way. Heel. That way. To make the next tool I'll need. All right, so I have the rock that I flint napped in the United Kingdom, and now I'm going to use it to make some other tools, specifically a uh, digging stick. It's going to help me loosen up earth and collect some clay, which will be very useful for a variety of things, most importantly getting to the Bronze Age. I also have a cat. Dangerous to go into the woods alone. Make sure you bring your cat for protection. Dubby leads the way. She's a, a trained stick finder. Which way, Dubby? Oh, want some of this? What is it? Is this what I think it is? There's a whole field of it. Come on, come on, Dubby. Ow. This one, this is the one. This one should be pretty good. Hopefully, I just gotta cut it. It is making decent progress. Be easy to debark this guy. Close to halfway now. Might be ready to break. Not quite a clean break. <laughs> I did what I thought it might. <laughs> Do some digging. This way. Ow. Let go. stick is pretty similar to just a spear that can be used to break up earth, but sometimes it can have a flat tip, so it can also function more like a shovel. I did it. I made a stick. You made a stick. Okay. Once roughly shaped, it's fire hardened over some coals and any burnt off portions that scraped off. Let's go dig some clay. But first, I'll need something to carry the clay on. Then, after digging in a few areas, I found a really promising spot. Interesting color. Well, yeah, I shouldn't be. It's... That feels like some good clay. The digging stick proved to be very helpful in breaking up the dirt, roots, and random rocks.
Holds form really nicely. Yeah. Right. That should be enough for now. <laughs> Take that back and start processing it. Ugh. Then I process the dry clay by breaking it up and picking out any rocks and other debris. All right, so I got my clay ground up to a relatively fine powder, removed all these solid rocks, except for this one. Should hopefully be ready to make it into something. So I got a bottle gourd I grew a few years ago, one of the earliest containers used for transporting water. It's a little deformed. I'm gonna take some of my flint tools, wind up the hole, fill it up with some water, and mix it with the clay powder, shape it into a small bowl. Let's make some clay. All right, got this guy cleaned out. Gotta take it down to the river, get some water. Three D printing. <laughs> All right, so I made a little primitive bowl here. So now I just gotta let it dry out and bake it in the fire. And Annalise make a few duplicate pots as backups as well. Then warm the pot by the fire. Sticks. Before burying them in the coals. Like this. Wow, so then they sit like that for a little bit. Burning down the fire several times on top of them. Lastly, it's buried and left for the night. In the morning, we dig them out. So hot? Not hot, maybe a little warm. Oh, there's one. Hey, it is solid, did not break. That sounds like a fire. Yeah, success. Hey. Hey. <gasps> they didn't break! Sweet. After the fire last night, this is the end result of my pottery. And it actually turned out pretty nice. I was a little worried it might end up breaking. It's a fairly decent chance we need to use that method. And I uh, got this little container, should hold stuff. All right, so here's the uh, modest collection of tools I've been able to produce for this first episode. And at this point, I'm mostly just building the building blocks to make future things. Right here, doesn't look like much, but it represents 25,000 years of human progress. That's what it took to get from stone tools to ceramics. So one major leap. Ceramics is very versatile. It can make a lot of cooking materials, variety of different holding containers that I'm not so limited to just gourds I'm able to grow myself. I can cook stuff over a fire or I can use it as a crucible for when it comes to metal smelting or even as a mold. So in terms of actual cost to produce each of these items, is all labor. So the overall production cost for these was pretty low. The flint in total took about three hours. So it's about $24 for this tool set. Not a bad deal. The clay and the whole processing of that took 10 hours. So that's about $77. So in total, that's 13 hours, about $101. So pretty modest at this beginning, but uh, we'll be going up from there for sure. Definitely not gonna stay that reasonable. So now that I've gotten a hang of some of these initial fundamental skills, the next step I wanna get into is actual metals, which will speed things up a lot because flint tools, while sharp, 
are not the fastest. So in the next episode, we're gonna advance into the next age was after the Stone Age, which is the Copper Age. And the easiest way to get a metal is to just find it on the ground. So we went to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, one of the areas with the most abundant supply of native copper, and then work it into some primitive tools that I can use for building some bigger things, specifically a dugout boat. So be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, so you don't miss out on that. Be sure to check out our Instagram for a sneak peek at next week's episode. Join our Discord to join the discussion. And last and most important, thank you to our patrons. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. If you aren't one, please consider supporting us. Any amount really helps, but if you do $15 or more, you can get your name on the board. Thanks again, and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.